Okay, this mother effer's rolling. <laughs> Hi everybody, it's Big Anklevich here, and uh, I'm back with another ankle cast. Um, today I'm doing the uh, the one that I promised I would do before, where I talk just about moving to Houston, what I think of Houston, what it's like here, uh, that kind of stuff. What my new life is, sans Rish Outfield, which is, you know... That's one of the biggest bummers about the whole thing is we've been here, shoot, now it's been like five months that we've been here. And I mean I'm not a I'm I'm not an unfriendly guy, but I'm not a guy who's like, yeah, let's go uh, out get some drinks or let's you wanna hang out, you wanna come to my house and have dinner with my family, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. I'm not very good at that kind of stuff. I haven't really made new friends. Rich Outfield may well be my last new friend that I ever made. One that I actually do things with outside of work or any other, you know, mandated activities, church, that kind of crap. Um... So, yeah, here we are five months in. I don't have any friends in town. Um, I did meet a dude who I thought was pretty cool. Uh, we were, uh, he apparently walks his kid to school. His kid goes to school at my kid's school. And so I walked my kid to school. And then one day I just happened to be walking next to him. And we started talking. And we wound up talking for a while. And then I saw him again the next day because they had the Halloween parade, which. At my kid's school, they didn't let you dress in your Halloween costume on Halloween. For some reason, that was an issue. Instead, they had their uh, Red Ribbon Week. And they wrapped the Halloween costume thing up into the Red Ribbon Week. That was the week before Halloween. And on Friday, the last day, they said, hey, it's... uh, costume day you know each day they had little themes like wear your red white and blue on this day wear your astros gear on this day uh and then yeah the last day was costume day and they let the kids wear their costumes but this was friday before halloween which happened on a tuesday so it was almost five days away um my son didn't have his costume ready My wife's never, she decided to make him a werewolf this year. And I don't think there's ever been a time where she finished a costume before the night before, or day of Halloween. I remember one of my kids went to school with a giant, uh, we printed out a quarter and taped it to his back. And that was his costume (laughs) because he was a quarterback. Uh, that's what he wore to school that day because his costume wasn't ready and then that night he wore something else I don't remember uh, what he actually wound up being but uh, yeah we're never ready that early and so my son just wore his Spider-Man costume from last year, no it wasn't even last year it was two years ago, that must have been a big costume the first year that he wore it because he's grown substantially since then but that's what he wore. They also, you weren't allowed to have masks, weren't allowed to face paint. Uh, so, just, how are you a superhero without a mask? Spider-Man just walking around, unmasked. You're the variant of Spider-Man. Uh, anyways, so, yeah, I'm getting off track here, but the, uh, so the next day after I met this dude, they had the Halloween thing and they had a little costume parade. And that happened like right after school started at like 8.15. And I happened to run into this guy again and we sat around and talked with each other for like 15 minutes while we were waiting for the um, Halloween parade to happen. 
and then uh, we both walked home and I talked to him while we walked home and then he went to his house and I went to mine. My house is much closer to the school than his. I don't know how much closer because I haven't been to his house. I run into him every now and then. I saw him this morning, but he was way ahead of me today. So I only just said, hey, what's up? And kept walking. But maybe, maybe I might actually make a friend. Uh, that would be interesting. Because I'm just not that guy. I mean, I'm a friendly guy, I think, but I'm not the guy that, you know, goes with somebody afterwards. I just go home and do my own thing. And um, sometimes when it comes down to it, being a friend is hard. Uh, I don't know. Maybe I'm like the, the younger generation because I think this is part of their deal, you know. They'd rather just... <laughs> my, my daughter uh, is happy to have friends, but she doesn't want to deal with them at home. She just wants them to be her friends at school. So... That's kind of weird, if you ask me, um, that you never want to hang out with the friends. You spend all day with them and you never want them to just come over and hang out at your house or do something with them. I don't know, go out and break mailboxes with them or something. But uh, yeah, she's just like, yeah, I'll, I'll text you or whatever. I don't know what kids do. They don't do anything of worth. That's all I know. But yeah, I guess I'm kind of a little bit like that. But I would like to have friends, it would be neat. But being a friend is hard because you have to, you know, you have to keep it up. Um, it's even harder for me now because yeah, keeping up friendship is calling somebody at a certain time and um, I'm not super good at that, that's for sure. Um, but yeah, all my friends are long distance friends now because I've moved to Houston. So on with the countdown, let's talk about Houston. But first, I'm gonna go inside and get a drink. Be right back. Okay, getting on the freeway now. I'm back from getting my drink at the uh, gas station. Let me uh, explain myself about that. I, I know that a little while ago I swore off soda. I did that for two weeks. And then, because uh, my birthday came along, I thought, oh, I'll just splurge just a little. So, <laughs> then I kind of got back on soda. And so I've been back on, but I'm about to go back off again, uh, along with doing some other stuff that I think should make my life healthier. So I'm looking forward to that, because uh, I tend to feel crappy a lot. But um, anyway, so I'm talking about Houston. Houston's a nice place. It really is a nice place. I like it a lot. Uh, when we moved out here, uh, it was a long drive, first of all. It was, I think, a 20-hour drive to get here. Um, I think, shoot, 10 of it probably is just driving across Texas. Texas is really wide, and we uh, came in at the border with New Mexico and came all the way across to East Texas, where Houston is. Houston is uh, relatively close to Louisiana. Um, it's only like a hour and a half, two hour drive, and you're in Louisiana. So that'll be cool. I, I plan on uh, at some point making a visit to uh, New Orleans, New Orleans, and uh, seeing what there is to see there. Can't decide. Thought it would be really cool to go at Mardi Gras, but I've heard that that's a little over the top for most people. If you're not like a drop dead drinker that's planning on dropping dead drunk, then it might be more than you're going to be into, and you might want to just come at a different time when it's not insanely crazy. I don't know. Uh, if you've been to Mardi Gras uh, and if you've been to New Orleans, otherwise drop me a comment and let me know what it's like, if it's if, what I should do. Because we do want to make that trip pretty, pretty soon. I don't know, probably 
won't come until at least next summer, but or maybe uh, February of the year after. Uh, but yeah, we drove. It's it was a forever long drive, um, and uh, it was uh, compounded the foreverness of it by the fact that uh, our SUV. A Dodge Durango that's pretty old I think it's a 2004 it broke down well it didn't break down but it had a serious problem in Albuquerque New Mexico so we had to uh, me and my son stayed an extra night there my wife and the rest of the family went on ahead because my wife had to be at work and she couldn't wait any longer so uh, she couldn't stay with us, so we had to split up at that point. And um, it's kind of bright out here today. I wonder if I can find my sunglasses. Then I could be cool on the ankle cast too. But it keeps squinting, so maybe it'll be better. Squinting is can it gives you cancer, I think. Right? Anyway, here we go. Oh, wow. I tried to clean those off, and they are still insanely dirty. Let me give it another wipe down. So, uh, when we got to town, we didn't have a house um, yet. My wife had been looking at a lot of stuff, uh, and she kind of knew already where... Uh, we were going to go, but we hadn't gotten ourselves a house yet, so we had to stay in a... Oh, shoot. The arm of my sunglasses just broke. Will they stay on anyway? Are they crooked? <laughs> this, one, this is these sunglasses' last ride. Yeah. Uh, Anyway, um, yeah, we didn't have a house, so we had to stay in a hotel. Um, finding a hotel that would let you have a cat is uh, a little difficult. We have a cat. Its name is Juno. It's a monster. Um, here is a picture of Juno. Look at that baleful baleful stare that she's giving me. She gives me that all the time. She hates me. Uh, I don't know that she hates me per se. So I think she's afraid of me, which is understandable because she's just kind of a scaredy cat in general. But, uh, but I'm also loud, uh, admittedly loud. And I think that is one of the biggest things that scares her. And then on top of that, I am the only one that uh, will not allow her, for example, to get up on the dining room table or get up on the kitchen counters. Uh, I chase her off of those things, and so I think she holds that against me and expects me to chase her down any time uh, instead of understanding that it's the counter that she's not supposed to be on. Uh, also, I'm the one that has yelled at her for pissing all over, like, clothes that were left on the floor. Because she does that. She has all the worst problems that a cat might have. Uh, funny thing is, one time I was talking with Abigail Hilton at the New Media Expo and telling her about my cat. And her suggestion was that maybe I should find a, a nice no-kill shelter. And, uh give Juno to that. But my wife is against that. She thinks that we took a responsibility when we took that cat and we got to live up to it. No matter how awful the cat is, no matter how much money she costs us by ruining all of our stuff, peeing on it and so forth, scratching. She does scratch a lot too. Scratches our couches. My wife has had to uh, get several new couch covers. Why am I talking about the cat? Oh yeah, we uh, 
we had to bring this cat with us because we have a responsibility. And so, I'm gonna have to take these sunglasses off. I feel like too much of an idiot because they're, they're crooked, aren't they? Um, and so, so, my wife found that La Quinta is a uh, hotel that allows you to bring animals. So that's good. By the way, I need to apologize about my window here. It's broken right now. It won't roll down or up. I can kind of get a hold of it from both sides and slide it up so that it's closed. But if somebody just like came up next to it and pulled down, it would just come back down. But it won't go out down all the way. It only goes down about that much. And then uh, that's like three inches for you uh, uh, listeners only. Um, and I'll pull it up all the way to the top when I start driving. But then as I, you know, drive along and bump and bump and bump, the, the window s just slides down a little bit more and a little bit more with each bump. Something I need to get fixed because it's a real pain in the ass. Uh, there's lots of time, like every day when I get to work, I have to get my card out and beep it at the card reader just to get through or get into our parking lot. And, uh, I have to open the door to do that, so it's pretty ridiculous. You know what I could do? Let's try this. Yeah, what do you think? Armless sunglasses. It's cool, right? That's what everybody does. All the kids are doing it. <laughs> Maybe I should just get rid of them. Anyway. So yeah, we spent a month, like just barely less than a month in this hotel. Luckily, my wife's uh, job paid for it because it was part of their relocation package because it was several thousand dollars to stay in a hotel for that long. And we did not have that money, I'll tell you that much. Especially since I was freaking uh, jobless at the time. I was jobless the entire time that we were at that hotel. I applied for a job uh, at a local TV station and I got an interview. And at the time that I got the interview, they didn't have any openings. Uh, they had like a part-time opening, I think, but they needed to fill it right away so they couldn't wait on me. And so they filled it. And uh, then out of the blue, uh, their nighttime guy quit. He was done. And so they, they needed me and they hired me right as the time that we spent in the hotel was coming to an end. In fact, the, the day that we moved into our house or the weekend that we moved into our house, I. I could have started work that week and I asked him, can I just start? I think I started like July 1st or 2nd or whatever uh, day the Monday was and we moved in over that weekend. But that was nice. It was nice that I was able to get a job relatively easy. At the time that we were living in the hotel, it, it wasn't that big of a deal that I didn't have a job because a lot of our bills were being paid for by the, my wife's job. But eventually that was going to go away. And uh, I was getting a little nervous. I hadn't been unemployed for that long since the year 2000, I believe. Maybe even more than that. I think I may have not been unemployed a whole month back in the year 2000, so it may have been even uh, 1999 that I was, the last time I was, maybe, it may have, yeah, I don't know, it may have been all the way back since before I was in college. Uh, so that's a little freaky to me, you know, especially when you've got four kids and a family and we're trying to buy a house 
and having issues because I didn't have a employment to uh, throw into the pot and say, oh yeah, I make this much money, so you can loan us this much money, etc. But it turned out okay in the end. Um, we went and looked at several houses. Uh, we actually did that before. We did that before uh, uh, we moved. We took a, a trip out, again, on my wife's job's dime. Uh, they paid for what they call a look and see. Uh, okay, I'm taking these glasses off. They're driving me crazy. The glare in the eye was not as bad as the glasses. I hope this audio is usable. It sounds so loud next to this freaking window that I'm afraid that it's going to be terrible. That you won't be able to hear a thing. I don't know where my mic is even. Where is it? Holy crap. Is it here? Oh, okay, it's right there. That's fine. <laughs> Anyways, let's hope the mic is really good and directional and it's not picking up a bunch of this wind and traffic noise. Um, yeah, when we came out on that trip, uh, my wife had several houses for us set up to look at. Uh, we got there and the first thing that she did was drive us out to that neighborhood. And I remember when we drove through, it was what filmmakers call the golden hour was getting really close to sunset. And so the sun was down low and the light that was shining all over everything was that nice golden light that you get at sunset time instead of the glaring white light you get when the sun is right overhead. And so we drove through this neighborhood that she wanted to move to. And I don't know if that golden hour thing had anything to do with it, but it looked like the world's most beautiful place. I swear, uh, I think a lot of it has to do with, you know, what we were coming from. Um, because yeah, where I was living was the middle of the desert and it was a brand new development, so none of the trees were old trees. They were all very new trees. And they've all been planted there as saplings. And most of them were very small. I think the tallest tree in town was probably 25 feet tall. And there just wasn't a lot of green in my old town much more brown because it was desert and we came to this place and it was so green and there was all these really tall trees that have been around for you know 50 100 years I don't know the uh, the people who developed this area um, they I think they made a point to work around as many of the trees that already existed there as possible. So, you know, they built the houses, but the tall trees that were there were left. And everybody's front yard has lots of trees and they're really big and beautiful. And I mean, here's, I, I've been showing you this video of it to give you an idea as we drove through the town, we looked at it and there was all these tall trees and really beautiful place and uh, it was um, there was the, like the, the really pretty red brick houses every house was this red brick and so the, the everything kind of went together but not in that terrible cookie cutter way but just in like okay we all agreed that this is the style that we're gonna go with. And I don't know, it was just really beautiful. We really, really liked the place. And uh, we looked at a bunch of different houses. I liked a certain house. My wife liked a different house. 
And then we got to the last house and all the kids and everybody decided they liked it the best. It was the most expensive house and because I had no job in town, I wasn't, we weren't able to bid on it because we just couldn't afford it. So we tried for the third house that I liked. My wife decided she would go for that and we didn't get it because somebody else beat us to it, I guess. And uh, I think that our realtor said that the people preferred our offer, but unfortunately they were already under contract with someone else and they were kind of hoping that it would fall through, but in the end it didn't. And so we had to just withdraw that offer. And in the end we went with the house that my wife preferred and we managed to get that one okay. We got it for really cheap. It had been on the market for a while, I guess, and uh, we were we were able to get it for like I remember at least fifteen thousand dollars less than what it. Uh, uh, what's the word? Oh shoot, the word has fled my head. But you know when they. Uh, they come and they look at your house and they decide what it's worth. Appraise. What, 15000 at least. I, it may have been twenty or more that we were able to pay less than what it appraised for. So it's a lot of equity, I guess, to already before we even uh, get started on it. But my wife has lots of plans. She's, she's one of those kinds of people that loves to remake houses. She actually considered several times that maybe she should quit her job and become a house flipper. But uh, she hasn't done that, which truthfully is probably a good thing because that's, I don't know, that seems like a uh, unreliable income. Um, anyways, yeah, so we got our house. We moved in after a month in a hotel. And then I started my new job at a TV station. Uh, what I am now is the uh, nighttime editor, which is a little, I mean, it's not totally new for me because I've done it before, but for shit, traffic time. My brakes are also really bad on this car right now too. I need to get those fixed too. I don't know if you could see it in the video or hear it, but I go, J -j 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 it really shakes the car as you brake. I need to get that taken care of because it's getting worse. Um, I don't know what that has to do with, but I need to get it taken care of if I'm gonna drive this thing every day. I don't wanna lose control and crash or something when I'm trying to brake. I have a tendency to try and brake lightly, try and do it slowly if at all possible because um, I don't wanna go <laughs> But anyway, um, so yeah, I started my job. It's, it's a night job for the last 13, well, not 13 years. 13 years I worked at the same place, but probably like seven years or so I worked uh, the day shift, which in new, in, at my job anyways, in, in news in general is uh, 10 to about six because you cover the, um, you know, the, four o'clock and five o'clock and six o'clock shows, depending on which of those you have. At my last station, we had a four and a five, and they were hour-long shows, so I would cover those, as well as the noon show, which became a noon shows, a noon show, which became noon shows because uh, we, uh, we kept adding a lot of shows while I was there. But, uh, so yeah, I would go in in the morning and get off at relatively regular time. I'd get home around 7 um, before. But now I go to work and I get there at starting at 2. So I leave for work at about 1, get there at about 2. And I am uh, there until 10.30, which is when our last show of the evening finishes. And then uh, just do a couple of things and I head home. So that's my new shift, which leaves me a lot of time in the morning to take care of stuff. So far I have not taken advantage of it. 
but eventually here soon, I'm even trying to work up like a little schedule of, you know, things that tells me do this on this day, this on this day, at this hour, you know, just like a little grid or something that I can look at and know, okay, 10 o'clock means time to write. And I write for a while and then it's like, okay, 11 o'clock, that means time to edit on the Dune Steef. And then uh, noon, time to get in the shower. One, time to go to work. Uh, 9 a.m., get your fat, lazy butt out there and do some yoga or something. I don't know. Uh, that's what I'm looking to try and do. Get myself back in gear, because, yeah, I was riding every day for, what, three months? Something like that? Um... At the start of this year, from February through like May, I did that. And then when June came along and we moved, it all went out the window. So that was a bit of a bummer. Um, but I needed to get back to it. The good thing is I know I can do it. I've done it before, all I gotta do is try. Uh, sadly right now I just, the other thing that I know, and I know this much better, is that it's really hard to get the momentum going sometimes. It's really easy to just... Uh, what's the object? The, the first law of motion. I think it's Newton. You know, an object at rest will remain at rest unless exerted by force. Some, some crap like that. And an object in motion will remain in motion unless exerted on by force. So I am the object at rest. And it's going to take some force to get me in motion, I, I guess. Um, hopefully it won't take that much. Um, but that's not our subject today. I'm not going to talk much more about that, hopefully. Maybe I'll wander off topic again, but... For now, I'm just going to keep trying to talk about uh, Houston, what I like about this place. Um, I'm a big sports fan. I like sports a lot, especially uh, NFL football. I'm a big fan of the NFL. I have been my whole life, pretty much. All the way back since I was like a, a very small uh, child. I really liked football and thought it was neat. And... Uh, but I've never lived in a city that has an NFL football team until now. So I'm excited about that. Um, not a fan of the Houston Texans, really. I, I, I uh, haven't managed to get that interest yet. Uh, the team started to look kind of good this year. Uh, I really like Deshaun Watson. He looks like he's going to be great, although... He didn't even make it through one season without ruining his knee. So let's hope that when he comes back, he's still as good. I mean, crap, he didn't even ruin it in a game. He tore it in practice. So I hope he's able to come back. And uh, on top of that, everybody else on the Houston Texans is injured. J.J. Watt is out, and Whitney Merciless, and on down the line. So. Texans aren't very good this year. I'd like to go see a game before the season ends, but they only have home games against a couple of really crappy teams. Like, I think the 49ers, who are presently 0-9. Uh, and I think uh, the... Uh, what's the other team? Cardinals. Cardinals aren't really crappy, but... You know, when you, if you go to a football game, it would be cool if you could say, hey, I saw this great player live. Wasn't that neat? Um, and I don't know. There might be a few players like that on, uh, on the Cardinals. Apparently, they have Adrian Peterson on the Cardinals now. Things are looking up for him. I don't know why he bailed out of the Vikings, but... He did, and um, he's already on his second team since the Vikings in less than a season. Uh, maybe I could take my old Adrian Peterson jersey and have him sign it. 
Although, gosh, I don't know. It's weird that uh, that stuff. I've got an Adrian Peterson jersey, but I'm a little leery of ever wearing it again because of the whole, you know, he was abusing his children with really harsh discipline. Uh, you know, that's one of those things that's weird about sports. You get some guy's jersey because you think he, he's really good and you love your team, and then all of a sudden this guy, I don't know, beat his girlfriend up or did something stupid, and now you're like, oh, great, what do I do with this guy's jersey? I spent 100 bucks on it, and I don't want to wear it out anymore. <laughs> so... Imagine all those people that used to have O.J. Simpson jerseys, and they're all like, oh, uh, anyways. <laughs> yeah, I think I may have to always personalize jerseys from here on out and get my name on the back of it, because, you know, I think I'm always going to be in support of me. Even if I'm a jerk, I'll still be like, no, dude, I don't care if that guy's a jerk. I'm wearing his jersey. Uh, but... Uh, this town has a lot of other sports too. Um, they have a basketball team, Houston Rockets. Uh, there's a soccer team, which <laughs> a few years ago that would have been a requirement. I, I used to tell my wife that, that if we were gonna move somewhere, they had to have a soccer team that I could go to because I was so into soccer. But as I got older, that kind of faded a little bit. And I haven't been that crazy for soccer in several years, but they have the Houston Dynamo, which uh, is a crappy name for a team, but you know, they're, they're a pretty good team. They're in the playoffs now. I think they're going to the uh, Western Conference uh, final right now. So we'll see if they manage to make it to the MLS Cup and join the other team in town the Houston Astros, they're really good. They just recently won the World Series, which is cool because uh, one of the things that happened to me since I've been here, oh, let me break in. I don't know if you guys can see out the window, but this is one of my favorite parts of town. Uh, I, I guess it's called the Montrose area, but they have these bridges a bunch of bridges and they're identical bridges and they all go over the freeway as you drive through town and uh, you know they're really pretty they got the walls and they're all covered with ivy going all down which is which is really pretty I've got video of it so let me show you this is what it looks like during the day as you drive through you've got the, the walls and the ivy and the bridges and they're really pretty but then at night it looks like this where you have the uh, bridges and all the bridges have these lights that go over the top of them. And they go all the way across and they're, and they're cool looking and you know, they're LED lights that look, light up in all different colors. So like when the Astros were in the playoffs and stuff, they would put make them in orange and blue. And um, when it was 4th of July, they made them in red, white and blue, uh, different stuff like that. Um, it's really cool. I like it. It's a neat landmark. I'd like to take my camera down here sometime and get some cool pictures of it because uh, I really like the look of it. It's really neat. Um, but yeah, the Astros went to the World Series, which was really exciting um, because the Astros, uh, if you're not a baseball fan, you don't know much about baseball, baseball plays... 162 games a year. Um, that's a lot of games, which basically means that they play six or seven days a week for most of the baseball season. Um, and because of that, there's a baseball game on every night. Um, they may not all be home games, but they're on every night. And since I'm working night, uh, at my job and I you know I can't really watch like a TV show or something you have to really pay attention to 
and also do my job. But I can, you know, put a baseball game on because baseball games tend to be slow, you know what I mean? They, they're up there, they're pitching, a uh, guy gets a hit, he's on base, and then another guy comes, and maybe he strikes out, another guy comes and pitch to him like 10, 15 pitches. Oh, then he gets a single and something actually happens. And that right there that I described to you takes 15, 20 minutes to occur. So it's a really slow paced game that you can, that I can just watch while doing other stuff and not really miss out because there's a lot of time between each thing happening. So even if I'm not looking, you know, have the sound on and you hear that click, that whack, you know, sound when the bat hits the ball. And so you can look up and see. And if you don't have a chance to look up and see, they're going to show a replay in just a second. And you can watch it then. So, you know, it's, it's perfect for, uh, <laughs> for watching this sport while I'm working at other things. And so I've done that for the last five months um uh, why am i in the lane that stopped i hate that yeah i've done that for the last uh five months and truthfully be truthfully i became really attached to the astros i became a fan um ah Somebody tried to get into my lane at the same time as I tried to get into my lane. Yeah, I became a fan of the Astros, and I, truthfully, when they started getting in the playoffs and stuff, I know I'm, I'm brand new to the city and everything, but I would have been really sad if they'd lost. I was really just really getting into it. And uh, I was really excited, and I thought it was great that they actually won the World Series. Now, most people that are, you know, that grew up here or whatever, you know, the Astros, I think, started playing in, like, 1962 or 3 or something like that. And this is their first championship. So it's been a long time for the uh, Houston Astros faithful. For me, it was five months. 50 years, five months, you know. But I'm a fan, and, uh, and I'm going to stay that way, I guess, unless I move somewhere else and they have to root for that baseball team instead. But that's something that I kind of decided I was going to do when I moved out here, is that, you know what? I know I'm not from here, and I have loyalties to other teams uh, in most sports, but I'm going to also support the hometown team. I really want to, you know, just get the best, make the you know most out of my time here. Uh, and rooting against the team because it's not my team is not going to be fun. It's going to make me an outsider the whole time that I'm here. So, you know, I, I just totally gave in and uh, became a fan of all the local teams. I grew up in Sacramento, and the closest baseball teams were the Giants and the A's. And the Giants were probably my team. A's were like, you know, okay, they're my American League team. But uh, the Giants were really my team. And, you know, I still like the Giants. I, I'm, I was never that into baseball, so I'm not super passionate about the Giants. But uh, the Astros are my team now. I'll have to see if I can get that way about the Rockets. The... Uh, they're doing really well. This season just started and they've won a lot of their games so far. But uh, I don't know, the Sacramento Kings are the only professional level sports team that Sacramento has. And so ever giving them up for some other team might be difficult. Although the Sacramento Kings are terrible. So, you know, maybe I can root for both because it's not like they're going to be playing against each other in the playoffs. Only the Rockets are going to be going to the playoffs. I don't know. But yeah, 
I, uh, I really enjoy Houston so far. But like I was saying before, the one thing that really kind of sucks about it is that I don't have friends that I can just do something with. Uh, and I think it's that way for my whole family. And none of my kids so far have uh, developed friendships with people. They don't bring their friends home and do things with them. And it makes me really sad, especially considering that my oldest son, it's his senior year in high school this year. So we pulled him out of his school right before the big graduation celebration and all that stuff that you get in high school. And he had a good group of friends that he really liked to spend time with before we moved. And sadly, all he does is still spend time with them. He uh, plays Overwatch online with them constantly. And he just, you know, he's, he's, we, I always hear him up sitting at his desk yelling in his phone. I don't know how they do that. It, yelling into his mic, whatever he does when you're an online gamer. I think he just got himself a new headset, which has the mic and the headphones and the whole bit. So uh, I suppose he uses that now. But... Um, yeah, it just makes me sad that uh, he's probably not going to get friends in time for his senior year to be something special. Uh, I'm sure my other daughters will be fine. They're younger. Neither of them have you know, managed to make a lot of good friends yet, or any friends that I know of uh, yet, but I think they will eventually... They'll have time, and by the time that you know it gets to those special times in high school, they'll have good memories of it. But as far as my son's concerned, he, he might as well have graduated last year. He's going to one year of pre-college. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, um, well, I'm I'm about at work, so I'm gonna wrap this up. Call this the end of the show. Uh, if you have any questions. Uh, about Houston, about my experience here, about whatever. Um, you know, if you want to know what my jock size is, just just drop uh, a comment into the video or uh, send an email to editor at doonsteef.com or I think you could also put a comment on the blog post that this uh, podcast is on. And I will try to answer them. Oh, you could also, uh, as I did before, uh, you could record yourself asking the co- the question, and I'll put you on the on the podcast. And um, that's awesome, right? Come on, you could be a, a huge star. All the seven viewers that I have will see your face and know your name. All right. Well, thanks for watching, folks. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for listening to those of you who are just listening. And uh, I'll see you again next time. I'll try to make sure it's not very long. That's one of those things that I'd like to do in the time that I have uh, before heading out to work. More ankle casts. More podcasts in general. All right. Talk to you later, folks. See ya. Congratulations. Today is your day. You're off to a great place. You're off and away. Your goal should be a dream with a deadline. That's why I gave you five years. Do it. Do it. You miss 100% of the shots you never take. Take the shot. There will always be things in the way you dream. Don't let your dreams be dreams. You go out and you find why not. You surround yourself with why not. Live a why not life, man. There are millions.
million no's, but all you need is one yes. Where we are today is where we are. Today's the starting day. I know what we're gonna do today. Just do it! Do it! And will you succeed? Yes, you will indeed. 98 and three quarters percent guaranteed. That's all it takes to be successful is an attitude. It's an awesome feeling when you truly believe that you're going to be successful. Nothing is impossible. Dreams don't come true. Dreams are made true. Your mountain is waiting, so get on your way. Bye bye, boy. Have fun storming the castle. Think it'll like? It would take a miracle. Bye bye. Bye.